Good evening. Welcome to SpectraCell's Thursday night webinar program. Tonight we bring you Addressing Digestion Naturally, presented by Diana DeGrosa. Slides for this webinar, along with other educational resources, are available on the left of your screen in the Learn More box. You can submit questions in the Q&A. A box also located on the left side of your screen. We will try our best to answer all of them. At this time, I would like to welcome Diana DeGrosa. Well, hello everybody, and thank you for tuning in. Today we'll be addressing digestion naturally. I hope that you find some of this information interesting and helpful, and it's something that I, I'd like to say right from the get-go is while you may understand a lot of what we say tonight, patients don't know. And so this information can be then discussed with them and it will help them out tremendously. So what we will be covering today, patient alternatives to excessive supplementation. Understand how to assess the root causes of micronutrient deficiencies, the role of micronutrients, CPC with differential, and CMP testing in GI dysfunction. Learn how to create targeted treatment protocols that include food therapy and minimal supplementation. All disease begins in the gut. Hippocrates said that. 70% of the immune system cells are in the gut. The GALT, the gut-associated lymphoid tissue. Proper digestion and absorption are paramount for optimal health. So let's return to the basics of function. So chronic disease is 75% predictable. The gut barrier is our number one protective factor. Intestinal epithelium has a surface area of a tennis court plays a major role in what is both absorbed and excreted. Tight junctions control the flow of particles between the gut and the bloodstream. Secretory IgA's antibodies produced in mucosal lining that play a major role in the immune system. Some stats to consider. Dietary intake deficiencies. 8% of Americans don't get enough zinc. 34% get inadequate vitamin A. 45, inadequate magnesium. 70%, inadequate vitamin D. No wonder so many have leaky gut. Zinc is vital for tight junctions. Vitamin A is vital for barrier function. Magnesium deficiency contributes to leaky gut and reduced bifidobacterium. And you know, even if you are in places where we have a lot of sun, like here in Arizona, in Florida, all of my golfers, they were out there all day long, they still test low in vitamin D. So giving patients alternatives to excessive supplementation. Isn't this what we see every day in our practice? So many times our first appointment, what happens? Patients bring in literally grocery bags filled with nutrients from whatever store, the internet, what have you. And they're still feeling badly. That's why they're coming to see you. So it's something that we really have to sift through Often I do validate them and say, hey, this is great. You're really trying to help yourself. But let's, let's step back a little bit here and let's really take a look at what's going on and then have targeted treatment protocols. So if a micronutrient test reveals five plus deficiencies, we've got to consider these questions. Why? What is that about? Is it a lack of absorption? Is it a digestive issue? So dietary intake should incorporate dietary variety, adequate fats, proteins, vegetables, nutrient density, quality carbohydrates. Is the patient already supplementing? If so, deficiencies can be due to poor or no absorption for quality products. Assess the patient's digestion. We're gonna constantly go, go to this. Digestion, digestion, digestion. Optimize food quality. quality. Organic, gluten-free, Eliminate processed, refined, and fast foods. Absolutely, that's pretty much a given in our field, isn't it? Educate patients on the role of food as medicine. Provide handouts listing foods that contain the nutrients they are deficient in. Spectra Cell has some wonderful handouts, and patients really enjoy receiving these. So encourage dietary changes. Change your diet, change your life. And then I would also ask you, have you done these changes in your diet? Often, just by starting to implement some of these things yourself, if you're not doing it already, creates a different energetic inside you, and the next thing you know, all of your patients will be doing exactly what you're doing, because it's something that is unspoken. They can feel it. 
eat nutrient-dense foods. If you do, often you can take your supplements three times a week instead of daily. And patients like this because so many of them are already experiencing pill fatigue. Emphasize healthy food choices and then supplements secondarily. So food first. Educate patients that it's much better to eliminate junk food than to attempt counteracting it through supplementation. So some strategies that patients will often use to counteract junk food. What do they say? Hey, they drink the sugary soda and then they take a metabolic supplement. Or they say, oh, I'm going to take some herbal supplements to, to counteract the sugar. They're going to eat the cake, but then they're going to take a gluten enzyme supplement. Or eat the ice cream and then take the lactate. But the hidden inflammation remains. Proper food preparation is essential for enhanced absorption. Nuts and seeds, soak them, sprout them, bake them at low temperature. This reduces the phytic acid and enzyme inhibitors. Now, this is something in our office. We, we actually do this, and we provide these types of foods, nuts and seeds, flax crackers, almond butter made from properly prepared nuts and seeds. Patients love this. It stabilizes their blood sugar, so then they can go into our, our appointment and, and listen with a sharp brain. And that's, this is extremely important. I have YouTubes that I teach them this because I want them to be able to embrace this idea and start to change their life. So it's interesting. Because we work with digestion a lot in our office, it's our main thing, I'll often hear patients say, oh, I, I can't eat almonds. They, they destroy me. Oh, are you allergic? Well, no, I'm not allergic. I did my allergy test and I'm not allergic. They just kill my stomach. So that's a good uh, indicator that they probably have either raw almonds or maybe even roasted from the store, the regular store, and they're not able to break down the phytic acid. I usually give them a couple of ours to take home with a digestive enzyme and just say, hey, okay, you know, when you're ready to try, try this. See what happens. Every single time they'll say, I can't believe it. I can eat your nuts. So let's teach them how to make them. If they are still eating you know, different grains and beans as part of the diet, then encourage them to soak them literally for days. This also reduces the phytic acid and enzyme inhibitors. When you work with patients who have IBS, they will notice the difference because what I hear is, oh, I was in a hurry and I had to open up a, a can of black beans. And Diane, I can't believe it. They actually bothered my stomach a little bit, but when I soak them and cook them, they don't bother my stomach. So again, the phytic acid enzyme inhibitors. Cook your kale, spinach, and all cruciferous veggies. Now this is something in our society. We have everything seems to be these days raw, raw, and raw. You know, I put raw kale in my, in, in my smoothie and raw spinach in my protein shake. This is something that we don't really agree with. I might be demonized for that, but it's, it's not something also in Chinese medicine that we like to see because these particular vegetables have a lot of oxalic acid and that binds calcium and can contribute to kidney stones. And here in Arizona, kidney stone, I think we're the kidney stone capital of the world, and this makes an enormous difference. So play around with this concept. Cook those veggies. Some of my patients now will even saute them or steam them, and then they put them in their shake because they want to shake. They didn't want to eat. Okay, that's fine. Work with them. So on that note, calcium metabolism and malabsorption, what do we often see? Bone spurs, cold sores, kidney stones, muscle cramping, and charley horses, skin rashes due to sun exposure, viral infections in the summer. So consider these things and try to teach them about their foods. And often when you do interview them and, and really look into their food journals, you'll see that they are consuming these things in a way that might not be beneficial to them. So here's a little calcium tissue deficiency case study. A cute little 90-year-old woman came in, and she first thing she mentioned was, I cannot sleep. Okay, well, what's going on? Why can't you sleep? Severe nighttime cramping in her feet. So, so severe, wakes her up four to five times a night, and she's literally screaming. And she's in a little care facility so that she has those alert buttons if she needs to because she has to pry her foot literally under the bed to relax her leg. And then if she falls, she can't get up. So, so you've got multiple challenges here because of these cramp the cramping in her feet. She was already taking a calcium supplement with a D and a multivitamin and was on a host of pharmaceuticals. 
So I knew that I probably, you know, will only get a chance to, to see her briefly, and I didn't want to overwhelm her. Ultimately, I wanted to look at her whole intake of, of uh, and her digestive system and all of this. But again, I knew I would only see her briefly. So I said, okay, um, do you happen to ha ever get cold sores? And she smiled and said, why, yes, look, I have one right here. I tried to hide it with my lipstick. So this is yet another sign, and that confirmed to me that she has calcium tissue deficiency. So I encouraged her to be open to taking this little supplement under $20, and I said, I really think this is going to help your cramps, because you're coming here also for acupuncture, but all the needles in the world is not going to help you if your issue is from a nutrient deficiency. So a week later, when I saw her again, sleeping like a baby, no more cramping. Understand how to assess the root causes of micronutrient deficiencies. Some causes include poor diet, food quality, nutrient dense versus calorie dense, food and mealtime hygiene, stress management. Foundational nutrition principles are missing. Nutrition education from TV marketing, social media, fads and dietary trends. Prescription drugs, over-the-counter medication, alcohol, all of these deplete us of nutrients. Look at this. Is this not what we see? And right when I think, oh, no, people are really getting better, I go to the grocery store and inevitably, what do I see in their cart? And again, observation. We don't want to judge people, but this is what we see. Junk, processed food, added sugars, additives all rob the body of nutrients. So repletion becomes critical. Cold cereal plus low-fat milk, toast, orange juice equals high sugar. Sugar, 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 sugar. Explain this to your patients. Causes that insulin spike followed by a crash. So you feel like you're starving within two hours, invariably eating another high-sugar snack, and so they're, they're just packing on the pounds and they feel absolutely defeated. Teach your patients the importance of blood sugar control. What happens and why? Empower patients to make better choices, perhaps suggest an online meal planner that accommodates food sensitivities like plate joy. And this is a, a, an interesting little um, online meal planner because you can actually put in, if you're gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free, if you're low carbohydrate, if you're paleo, what have you, and a whole bunch of recipes will come up. It's easy for us as practitioners to say, oh, we just want you to have meat, veggies, really good fats, and very few starchy carbs. And maybe that's what we all do, but a lot of these people will get very bored with that. And inevitably, what do they say? What can I eat? Oh, well, I just told you. No, what, what can I eat? So bringing these types of things to, to the table will really help. Educate patients by encouraging a phased approach. We learn and evolve as we go. When I first opened my practice many years ago, I'm sure I went so far overboard and, and probably freaked people out. And now I know if somebody comes in, you know, and they're eating fast food literally every single day, are they going to go from that to eating just meat, veggies, and, and good fats? No, probably not. And really we want to set them up for success because we want them to be able to take some of these principles away and live a wonderful, healthy life. And this is what we say. We want to clear away the interference so that you can lead a profound existence. So let's help them do that. And then start with a, a few little things, a few little concepts, and then move on to the next phase. You create it with them, a little partnership. Bring your own lunch to work. This is a big one. Tons and tons and tons of my patients now actually bring their own lunch to work, and it's fun. Okay, so make a little bit extra at dinner and bring that as leftovers. Most of my patients never eat sandwiches anymore, so they're bringing literally little, you know, glass containers filled with, with veggies and, and healthy meats and have an extra thing of olive oil at their office, unrefined salt and these types of things. Bring menus as an educational tool and teach patients how to make more informed choices. So I'm not telling you you can never go to a Mexican restaurant again, but maybe you can go and say, all right, 
Let's see, I'll have some achaca beef, and really I don't want rice or beans or those chips, but how about having two sides of cooked veggies with that? All right, maybe I can have five tortilla chips with the guacamole and then take away the basket. This is enormous. And by doing that too, they are learning to become mindful. Focus on quality proteins, carbs, veggies, fats. Try to reduce or eliminate the starchy carbs. We do have a challenge, as we all know, in America. Diabetes is a, is a very big problem here. So the more we can educate, the better. I often will play a game with them and call it the no double carb game. So if they're having a glass of wine, then, then skip the bread and skip the dessert, or skip the pasta, skip all of that and have your glass of wine. If you decide, no, 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 they have the best garlic bread ever, okay, so then you're gonna have a, a total meat and veggie entree. Search for nutrient dense foods. Encourage patients to explore. This is what we call a participation sport. There are things I can teach you and then things that you need to do for yourself because we're not with you 24 seven. Make a conscious decision to be more mindful. This is another great handout from SpectraCell. Patients love this because they get to see all of the nutrients on the left here and what foods, where they can find what foods they can eat and optimize so that they can get these nutrients. When nutrition status is low, there's a tendency to overeat. You compensate by attempting to nourish yourself with empty calories, leading to a bottomless pit, overfed but malnourished. And it's very frustrating for patients because they come in and they say, gosh, I, I, I feel like I'm starving and I just keep eating and eating and eating and nothing is, is satisfying me. Well, if you don't have good quality food, you're trying so hard to get nutrients from something that has no nutrients. So of course you're, you're constantly eating. Micronutrient flyer for patients. Use this opportunity to have this conversation. White processed flour is devoid of naturally occurring B vitamins. Fortified usually means that vitamins and minerals were added back after processing. Folic acid is commonly used in fortified products. It cannot be assimilate, assimilated by patients with MTHF arsenic. How filled is your bucket? Pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, these all deplete crops and soil of minerals. Therefore, they deplete you of minerals too. Will your toxic bucket spill over before you complete your bucket list? Food hygiene and stress management. Some food for thought. Are you usually stressed out when you eat? Stress causes stagnation and thereby causing downstream issues. So if you're stressed out when you eat, your body is literally like a kinked up hose. It is literally kinked up. So you're putting food down into a hot, moist environment, and your body says, yeah, sure, what do you want me to do with that? So at mealtimes, let's slow it down. Focus your chi on digestion by doing the following. Make Cooking, a whole family experience. Make a nice place setting. Chew your food properly. Put your fork down between bites. I often ask my patients, do you inhale your food? Are you, are you like a snake? Try chopsticks if you're eating too fast. Let's breathe. Perhaps consider music without any words. No TV news. Pleasant conversation. How often do we hear from our patients, dinner time is fight time? Let's work at changing this. Pay special attention to your food using all your senses, smell, taste, appearance, and texture. Rest and digest. And if you're lucky and have a little bit of extra time, maybe a thousand steps after each meal. Knowledge of basic nutrition principles is missing. Nutrition is learned from TV marketing, social media. People blindly follow celebrity endorsements and fads. Does one size really fit all? I don't think so. Educate, educate your patients by focusing on the basics. The body has a need for fat-soluble vitamins from quality fats, butter, ghee, 
coconut oil, MCTs, avocados, they help you absorb your minerals. Butter and ghee and steamed veggies can be a good idea. Dairy foods, make your choices full fat. No skim or non-fat milk. The fat-soluble vitamins A and D absorb the calcium. So if you take away the fat, how are you absorbing the calcium? This was a really big one in my practice. So often I'll, I'll ask them if they feel like they do okay with dairy. And if we're not doing an elimination diet yet, they're okay, but let's change that. Let's change it to full fat. And often they look at me like I'm crazy, like, oh, no, I'm going to gain weight. Not one of them has ever gained weight. In fact, what do they say? Wow, when I have the full fat, I'm satisfied, and I don't even want all that fruit in the yogurt anymore. The role of micronutrient, CBC with differential, and CMP testing in GI function. Patients love our functional blood chemistry appointment. It's usually the first time anyone has ever explained the connection between the markers, the interconnectivity of the organ system function, and the patterns. Patients can see this, they understand, and they chart changes. Many of my patients are results oriented. They're already coming in and spending quite a lot of money on these programs and they, they want to see improvements. And also, you know, they have an MD that they go to also, and they really want to hear from their MD, hey, wow, you're doing great. What did you do? They, they want that. Patients need that. They need to have a pat on the back. Who doesn't? They are more likely to be compliant with protocols when they get it. So basic blood work can reflect early signs of GI dysfunction. Patients will often bring blood work from their doctors to do a functional blood chemistry assessment with us. Often it's just a CBC with differential and a CMP. So, okay, it's, it's a starting point and, and we'll use that. And there's some things that you can look at for some basic GI dysfunction screening. Look at the functional or optimal ranges. And again, always ask why. Which function is challenged? So for checking for hypochlorohydria, now you might have already done a symptom survey or an MSQ, whatever type of screening tool that you use. And you might say, oh no, you know, they have all of these symptoms, so I really think that they have hypochlorohydria. Okay, and then you see their CBC with differential or CMP, and you say, wow, total protein optimal range is 6.8 to 7.4. Standard is 6.0 to 8.4. So you can see by using optimal ranges, if you're using standard ranges, you're going to miss a lot of people. So the globulin optimal range 2.4 to 2.8. So if it's increased, the protein's not being broken down adequately. If it's decreased, they're not producing enough HCL. Food is fermenting, putrefying, causing the body's acidic condition. So this, these two little markers right here, you can show that to patients and say, hey, look, this is what I feel is going on, and so let's do X, Y, and Z. B12, typically deficient, as it requires being bound by protein for absorption. So both are signs that HCL needs to be optimized. A few markers to evaluate vitamin B deficiency. MCV, optimal range, 85 to 92. Standard is 80 to 96. MCH, so if these are increased, this may suggest that you need folate, B12 or B6 for absorption and assimilation. B vitamins are essential for liver detoxification. And sometimes you'll see other symptoms. You might see neuropathy or high blood pressure. You can also optimize food choices and replete with appropriate vitamin Bs. But always encourage the foods too. We don't, we, we don't want to give the message that they're going to be unhealthy unless they take these supplements. Often, if I do see a patient very depleted, especially if we look at micronutrients, you know, what they have for today might be for today. If they haven't had greens for, you know, their entire life because they say, oh, I hate greens, well, then more than likely you're going to need to also replete. You're going to need to give them a nutrient while they're working on increasing their dietary intake of those, those wonderful veggies. So to assess for a bacterial pattern, often we'll see you know, the neutrophils, optimal range, 40 to 60, standard 40 to 74. Lymphocytes, 
Optimal range 25 to 40, standard 14 to 46. Increased neutrophils plus decreased lymphocytes often is a bacterial pattern. Bacteria is a huge drag on the immune system. So consider using bacterial killing herbs. Some of you all might be experienced in, in using herbs. We, we love them in our practice. And ultimately fix faulty digestion. Because here's the thing too. Okay, so you see this. And so you just see the, the protein and globulin off. You can say, oh, look at this. So here's the thing is if you have a salad and that salad has bacteria on it, usually the stomach says, no problem. I can I just secrete my hydrochloric acid and I'm going to eat up that bacteria. Well, if you're hypochlorohydric and not secreting enough, you can launch into a bacterial infection. So next thing you know, you have that for years and years and years, and maybe you just don't know. Maybe you're just not 100%. And next thing you know, you've got a massive bacterial pattern that now needs to be addressed via herbal therapy. But patients, patients absolutely love this. Prescription drugs over-the-counter medication, alcohol, substances that deplete nutrients and dis dysregulate function. This is a beautiful handout from SpectraCell. Often when patients come in and they have their huge laundry list of pharmaceuticals that they're on, I pull this out. And, and often I'll just give them a copy to take home and say, okay, look at what we're seeing here. Okay, we're going to really want to do a micronutrient test. So we see if you've been on these drugs for this long, well, let's see how, how affected you are. So the role of micronutrient testing in GI dysfunction, important to determine specific nutrient deficiencies? Absolutely. Don't fall into the trap, though, of prescribing a pill for every deficiency. Ask why. Look for the root causes of deficiency or dysfunction. Again, start with the basics. Stress, poor diet, environmental factors, challenge detoxification pathways, sluggish liver gallbladder. I'm going to say that one again. Sluggish liver gallbladder. This one is a huge one in our practice. We'll get into that in a little bit. So a micronutrient test helps determine absorption and assimilation as reported levels reflect intracellular status. So seeing is believing, and patients love this test. Recommend, recommendation is to retest in four to six months to assess the efforts of lifestyle habits that promote optimizing food choices and digestion via targeted nutrient protocol. So again, if a patient is not going to eat greens, you're probably going to need to replete with folate supplement. Maybe a green powder, perhaps, in, in protein shakes. But you've got to be willing to work with each patient and meet them where they're at. I, I often will hear, and I, under, I understand some of my colleagues who, who do say this, they'll say there's, you know, hey, it's my way or the highway. I like to take a, a little bit, perhaps, softer approach and really try to meet them where they're at because often there are reasons why they might be hesitant. And if we can break through that, they become patients often for life. So the role of cardiometabolic testing in GI dysfunction, this is actually a whole webinar in and of itself, but the cholesterol, the lipoprotein particles, insulin, omega fats, inflammatory markers, leptin, absolutely provides great insight into metabolic syndrome. I love this test. And the fun thing is, is the before and afters with treating with nutrients for this test just blows the patient away and sometimes blows other, uh, my other colleagues away too. It's just they're, they're amazed at how you can really change, change people's chemistry by using nutrient support and, of course, foods. Learn how to create targeted treatment protocols that include food therapy with minimal supplementation. Insights and tips. If you don't eat healthy fats, bile won't be secreted sufficiently. That it has, has nothing to emulsify. So, this is huge, huge, huge. It's often something that is missing in a lot of um, protocols. And really by optimizing bile secretion, thinning the secretion, the results are amazing. And we'll get into this a little bit more shortly here. Bitter greens also help with bile secretion. So radicchio, endive, 
arugula, that tricolor salad that you go when you go to a, a nice Italian restaurant. There's reasons for this. By eating the salad, you're literally preparing your body to, to digest and, and utilize the foods that's coming. Bitters are essential to good health. Often what I'll hear in our society is, ooh, I don't like it, it's bitter. And I try to explain, yes, and we need to eat it on purpose. It's not just, I want sweet food all the time. We, ha we need to become more mindful that there is a reason why these foods have these qualities and how they can assist us in improving our health. Fat emulsification, why is it so important? Fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, K, are needed to absorb minerals like the calcium and magnesium. You know, you see things all the time, right? You see people becoming osteoporotic, often younger and younger and younger. It really begs the question. And when we look at the diet, still some of them, right when I think that nobody does this anymore, but still many are, are using margarine. You're not getting these fat-soluble vitamins you are not absorbing. So often they're thrilled when you tell them, oh, yes, I really want you to eat ghee or butter. They're, they're very happy about it. I've had people cry in my office because I've said that. So again, yes, add the butter to your broccoli. can help improve the calcium absorption. Haven't we all had patients who say, Diane, I did very well this weekend. I had a salad, and I just enjoyed the greens. I didn't even need dressing. And I say, well, I'd actually rather you have a dressing. No, not bottled dressing, because if you look at the ingredients in bottled dressing, it's, they're terrible, absolutely terrible, terrible quality oils. But let's face it, it is the easiest thing to make. Dressings, very easy. Just get a variety of wonderful oils, variety of, of fun vinegars. There's a ton out there. And just use that. You can shake it in a jar with some spices. Beautiful. Next thing you know, once you do that, you'll never go back to bottled. Organic liver is an amazingly nutrient-dense option for those with inadequate iron. I've had people literally come in and they've been on iron supplementation for years and they are still anemic. So my first question is, oh, well, do you have enough hydrochloric acid in your stomach to absorb the iron? Now, of course, nobody's on hydrochloric acid, so they're probably not absorbing to begin with. But if I can get them having some liver, liver pate, what have you, and again, I know I might be demonized for saying that, but of course, very, very, very good quality liver. It is amazing. You'll feel like you had a B12 shot. Organic meats and chicken, non-GMO, hormone free is recommended. Very important. So wouldn't we rather encourage people to spend a little bit of extra money on organic than say, oh, okay, well, congratulations, you have this, this health challenge now and you're going to need to be on expensive supplementation you know, for the next 10 years. So if you're getting good quality food, it is absolutely amazing how you don't necessarily have to do as much supplementation. So hypochlorohydria, or low stomach acid, deficiencies, causes deficiencies in B12 and zinc, and B1, both are needed to make HCL, GI inflammation, H. pylori infection actually shuts down the parietal cells. Do you ever hear a patient say, every time I take my vitamins, I get a stomach ache? Okay, well, they do, and so patients will say, I think that that means vitamins are bad for me. Well, actually, let's look at this a little further. So we start assessing digestion, and bingo, they start to take you know, their supplements with, say, a hydrochloric acid supplement, um, betaine HCL, that type of thing. And they say, oh, wow, I don't have a stomach ache anymore. Great. So this is a huge indicator. And also, I mean, imagine that sometimes. Again, when the patient comes in with the two grocery bags full of supplements, if you imagine a stomach, just picture an empty stomach, and now fill that with 20 capsules. I mean, the idea of that is just unbelievable. So, yeah, people say, oh, my gosh, that's like a meal. Yeah, sure, sure it is. So, again, you need to make sure that digestion 
is working and working very well. So if the spec spectra cell micronutrient test reveals B12 and zinc deficiencies, again, assess GI function. Optimize digestion. If repletion is not possible, you have no absorption. Consider HCL supplementation or a full spectrum digestive enzyme. I often will recommend unrefined salt because it's then considered a food because it has the trace minerals. And also we think NaCl, we need the Cl, the chloride, in order to make HCl. So believe it or not, that little tip, that putting that teeny bit of, of unrefined salt in your broth or soup that you're having prior to your meal is actually starting this, the digestive process. And that can be extremely, extremely helpful. So if repletion is not possible, you have no absorption. Okay, so I had a patient come in, and no kidding, she had a spreadsheet. She was an educated patient, actually. She, she took all the nutrition webinars herself and you know, really trying to help herself. And literally 30 supplements she was taking. It at, at, might have been even a few more. Now, she does tend to practitioner hop, and we all have patients like that. It's okay. Maybe they, they didn't have the answer that they wanted to hear. So they're coming to us. And so I said, wow, this is, this is a lot of a lot of supplementation. So um, let, let's look at your digestion and talking about digestion, elimination. And this gal is not having a bowel movement. So once a week, once every 10 days, and usually she has to take a laxative at that point. Well, what do you think all of those nutrients are doing in her system? Nothing. You have a problem south meaning constipation, you look north to address it first. It's not just, I'm constipated, here, take a laxative. So again, you, we're going to have patients like this. We're all going to have patients like this. And right when you think, oh, no, not me, oh, you'll have one tomorrow. You'll see. Support liver gallbladder function. The gallbladder is hugely important in digestion. Bile secretions are necessary for the emulsification of fats. They clear excess cholesterol. They help remove xenobiotics, drugs, heavy metals. Bile is required for peristalsis. You must eat healthy fats in order for bile to flow properly. Beetroot supplement is a game changer. This is probably my number one supplement, and we work extensively with digestion. The gal I just mentioned, Prior with the 30, 30 supplements, guess what? I gave her a beetroot supplement and had her chew, well, two to four every meal. Started going to the bathroom immediately. Free up the liver gallbladder. It's vital. So some of the symptoms that you might see with biliary insufficiency, so in a, inadequate bile or bile is too thick, lower bowel gas and or bloating several hours after eating, the whites of the eyes, the sclera, are yellow, dry skin, itchy feet, or the skin peels on the feet. Any time I have a new patient, say, after we do our initial health history intake, Say they're also getting a double appointment where they're coming in for an acupuncture session. So they're lying on the, on the table, of course, no shoes and no socks. This is what I often see. And of course, I would have already done an intake. I probably already would have written down beetroot supplement. But this is something that we see often. Bitter metallic taste in the mouth, headache over the eyes. Fatty foods cause distress. How often do we hear that? Oh, no, I don't eat fats, Diana. Oh, no, 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 I know they might be good for me. They kill me. Oh, no, can't do it. Absolutely kill me. Oh, here, this is, this is a good point while we're talking about this. So what's popular these days? Bulletproof coffee. Everybody's doing bulletproof coffee. And they're putting MCT oil in their coffee, and they're doing probably ghee too. Hey, I do. Okay, so people say, oh, that kills me. I am absolutely dying every single time I do that. I say, oh, no, here you go. 
take the beetroot supplement. I said, chew two of them. No problem now. Absolutely no problem. So now supposedly you don't need bio salts to break down coconut oil, but nonetheless, when they have distress like that, beetroot, and you've got your answer. They will love you forever. So history of gall gallbladder attacks, stones, stools that float, stools that stick to the toilet that are difficult. You have to keep flushing. That's a sign that there's fat in the stool. They're not absorbing it. Oh, here's our little guy. Just this, this is a good little, little case study. So this is our little case study for why we thin the bile. A mom comes in to get her probiotic, and she looks very distressed, very irritated, mixed emotions. Hey, what's going on? Oh, my six-year-old has chronic constipation. Months and months and months, he just will not poop. And the poor little guy hides in the closet, and, you know, he doesn't want to, sh he doesn't want to come out. He doesn't want to, to talk to us. He's just withdrawn, and I'm seeing my child suffer. So we have gone to all these doctors and all these specialists and spent over $10,000 on all these visits. Now, not to mention also bringing the child to all of these visits over six to eight month period is not nice for a six year old. He's starting to think that, you know, there's something wrong with him and why do all the other kids get to play after, after school and I'm going to the doctor all the time. They start getting a complex. So they've done all these doctor's visits, tests, no relief, and one just said, oh, take some Miralax, which annoyed her to no end because she said, I could have figured that out but I don't want to do that because I've read a lot of the unfortunate side effects here. So, of course, we've already had, we've, we've, we always talk about food. However, she really wasn't coming for him. She was just venting about him. Now, little children have stress, and they absorb stress. So Chinese medicine, that can heat up that liver energy, creating that liver chi, liver energy stagnation. It's not free-flowing the liver gallbladder at all. So I just said, you know what, here handed her a beetroot supplement, again, under $20, and literally, she said, oh my gosh, I did what you told me to do. I gave him one two times a day. I had him chew it. The next day, pooped his brains out. She was thrilled. She said, I don't understand how that works, because this is not a laxative. And I, I tried to explain, you know, the process of digestion. So, again, you've got to have that in your protocol. It is, it is an absolute game changer. So some food therapy for digestive support. Ginger root tea is a favorite in my office. We teach them how to take the, the fresh root or actually rhizome and grate it, put it in some boiling water, then reduce it, and let it simmer for half hour or so. Make it really strong so that way you, you, can, you can make it just once in the week. Strain it and have a cup or two. And what's nice about making it strong, you just add as much water as you need for your taste. Very anti-inflammatory. It's warming. It aids in digestion. It also increases bile secretions. Beautiful. Eat radishes prior to a meal. So everybody comes home and they're starving and all the, all the kids are, are uh, you know, expressing. So... I tell the moms, why don't you cut up a whole bunch of radishes and some jicama, and these, yes, we can have raw. And, of course, the radishes help promote gastric secretions. The jicama is a prebiotic fiber. So you're getting two beautiful things here. Put a plate of those out and let your, let your children and husband and family start having those prior to a meal. It's not going to ruin their appetite, but it's also part of a healthy meal. You can add some guacamole to get those good fats. When we have guacamole, even when I have parties at my house, we serve them with nori sheets instead of, instead of chips to increase nutritive value. There's two different, well, two different ones that I've used, the Korean one and the Japanese. The Korean is a little more delicate, and often it's seasoned, probably not with Celtic salt, but it, it does have a little bit of salt. It is delicious, however, and we use that. I just tear up the sheets, and this is what we use. So the Japanese one tends to be firmer. And that is perfect for a wrap. So if you're doing some shredded veggies, yes, preferably cooked, and your avocado, some protein, you can roll them up absolutely beautifully. So using herbs 
we like to use them liberally in food preparation. With in our household, no, it's not usually a teaspoon. It's tablespoons, if not a half a cup or a cup. If I'm using parsley, if I'm making rice, cauliflower, I literally use probably two cups of parsley in mine and then add all these different spices. Turmeric, cumin, garlic is a beautiful combination. So we've got anti-inflammatory principles and we have digestive aids with the cumin and the garlic, the antimicrobial. This is a beautiful combination. You can use it also for meats. What I have patients do is take these powdered herbs and put them in a jar and add all different types of healthy oil and then shake it up and put it all over your veggies. Beautiful. So it's very nutrient-packed, very antioxidative. Another nice blend, coriander, fennel, cumin. These I typically grind in like a uh, coffee grinder. That's, that's used for herbs. And then we, we mix them really well together. And then when you're sauteing root vegetables, beautiful. So again, you're, you're assisting digestion in a huge way. Rosemary. Here in Arizona, it's like a hedge. So almost everybody has rosemary. Now, of course, you want to make sure that your lawn and your yard is not sprayed. And we don't, we don't use um, toxic pesticides at all, not ever. So you want to make sure of that first, or if you have little pots that you're growing, that works too. But contains more than two dozen antioxidants, and it's naturally anti-inflammatory. You can take a whole bunch of, of rosemary stalks and infuse them in olive oil. Wilt them a little bit first so that the, some of the moisture content will come out. Otherwise, you can have uh, moldy oil. So just wilt it a little bit and then use it in, in, uh, with the olive oil. You can mix it into vinegar for salad dressings and also for meat marinades. Just, just put, put the stock all, in, all through, throughout the meat and let it marinate for a couple hours with olive oil in the refrigerator. Oregano is very bactericidal, a wonderful healing herb used in cooking, salads, in your gluten-free, savory baking creations. I always encourage that if, if patients are experimenting with gluten-free baking, that, they're, that they try savory. And you can use almond flour and these types of different types of flours that are higher in protein and more nutrient-dense, because that's what it's all about is nutrient-dense. Because if you look at a lot of the gluten-free offerings in the health food store, some of them are really not so healthy. It's tapioca and just, just not very, very healthy types of uh, ingredients. Chamomile tea is wonderful. Often if you're working towards getting patients off their PPI and uh, you want to help them take out some of the fire of their acid reflux, this is one, one thing they can do is make copious amounts of this and, and drink a cup a couple times a day even. Of course, along with a protocol to help heal and seal their gut and take out the fire, there are many steps involved, of course, with getting patients off PPIs. And again, that, that's a whole other webinar in and of itself. Implement a food first approach. Optimize one's intake of veggies. Consume, again, the properly prepared nuts and seeds. Healthy fats for absorption. Incorporate those herbs and spices into cooking and food preparation. Food hygiene, vegetable teas, room temperature water. This should have a star here. This is in Chinese medical school first day. Always room temperature water. Especially when you, when you first wake up, absolutely, your body has been warm the entire evening or entire night, and you don't want contraction. This will burn out stomach, your, your stomach digestive ability. So room temperature water, and if, if, if a lot of you say, ooh, gross, seriously try this and have your patients do this because this makes an enormous difference, and they will report to you that it does. Increase fiber intake, flax seeds, chia seeds, the glucomannans. I love this micronized fiber. When I lived in Japan, we, we ate something called konyaku, and that is actually the glucomannans is from the konyaku, but instead of eating lots of this, this gourd that is kind of gelatinous, you can get it micronized, and a fourth of a teaspoon is, is all the dose that you need. So it's about the smallest amount of fiber, and it's wonderful prebiotic. So empower the patients by guiding them and encouraging change every step of the way. This creates healthy body, healthy mind, healthy spirit. Fun with food. Here's our, I love this, this chart from the Institute for Functional Medicine. 
So it's the phytonutrient spectrum of foods. We basically want a color of the rainbow of every single one of these, these vegetables. And then it provides all of these wonderful benefits. Patients love this too, because they'll circle what they're consuming. And I'll say, okay, let's try to circle some other things when you go to the grocery store this, this week. So raw veggies, again, can be harsh on digestion. In TCM, we like to see more cooked veggies. Too cold on the body, burns out digestive fire, but some of the salad greens are acceptable. As we've mentioned already, the raw kale and spinach and smoothies can be very hard on digestion. Oxalic acid binds calcium, so cook these grains. Eat them with good fat. Practical protocols to enhance your patients. Practice to better help your patients. So expand your use of micronutrient and cardiometabolic tests. Consider adding perhaps a comprehensive stool analysis. Attend blood chemistry seminars. I, I love mastering blood chemistry by, by Dr. Harry Eitner, wonderful class. Take functional medicine seminars and classes. Patients love when you're, when you're getting extra learning. Also seek out your local reps, your nutrition reps. They, are, they can be a great um, source of information as well. So if you're too busy to, to learn and implement, then hire a health coach, hire a nutrition person in, in your office. It can really, really help. Collaborate with a traditional Chinese medicine acupuncturist. That also is a game changer. Somebody comes in with a massive attack of IBS and they, they're like, look, I look six months pregnant. They get a treatment, they leave with a smile on, on their face and absolutely amazed that all of their pain went away. Now they're better apt to say, okay, I can ingest your protocol now. They don't feel like eating anything when they feel that bad. So functional nutrition is the cornerstone of functional medicine. Functional testing gives you and your patients objective confirmation of deficiencies and dysfunction. Digestive health, it's the gift that keeps giving. Okay, so let's see if we have some questions. Okay, so first question. I have a patient that complains of belching like crazy after every meal. He is embarrassed by it. What would you suggest? Okay, a couple things. First, assess, again, food hygiene, because we want to set them up for success. And that means, again, slowing it down, making sure he's not in fight or flight, nice relaxing music, this type of thing, and really beetroot supplement, beetroot, 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 that is a game changer. That is going to free up his liver gallbladder. It's going to allow him to emulsify his, his fats, and it's going to allow for, for things to start moving. Okay. So, oh, okay. What is the name of the boot, beet root supplement that I like? Does it come in a chewable option? So, I actually love Biotics Beta TCP. I love this product. And I just have people chew it. It is not in a capsule, and it's another reason why I like it. It's in a tablet. So chew it. Now, some patients will say, ooh, gross. It's really not that bad. Other patients will love it, but they love the effect, and most patients never want to go off of this. Okay, let's see. Okay. How do you work with a patient who is a vegan? Okay. Vegans can be challenging, as we all know. I'm a recovering one from a long time ago, so I attract them, and that's okay. First, I like to ascertain is if, if they are a real vegan, meaning they eat veggies, or are, are they a carbitarian, because sometimes they're, they're junk food, just junk foodaholics. So, so we need to ascertain that and then work with, with their food, of course, you have to supplement. I like to do a micronutrient test with these, these individuals because I need to show them the effect of uh, their diet. And they do like this because they're coming for a reason. And when you have a 21-year-old say, oh, uh, I, I've been a vegan for a handful of years and my teeth are loose and I'm losing a lot of hair, uh, you shouldn't have loose teeth guys at 21 so that tells me too you're not getting your fat soluble vitamins you're not absorbing anything and that that's that's not fun because if you're having loose teeth now you're gonna lose your teeth so 
often with the vegans, I work towards, hey, is there any possibility maybe you could consider having eggs in your diet? And some of them have said yes. If this is really going to help me get my health back, yes. And then you have to supplement. It's, it's just the way it is. Can you repeat the name of the beetroot supplement? I know I speak fast. Yes. Beta, B-E-T-A, T-C-P, from Biotics Research. Beta, T-C-P. Again, wonderful game changer. Okay, so let's see the next question. If a patient doesn't eat any grains, do you ever see an issue? Yes. I, I have seen a couple issues. Now, again, you have to assess the patient, and each person is different. So I have seen very low bifido and short-chain fatty acids in the stool test. So sometimes they'll say, okay, I, for two years I have not had grains. And, you know, I really noticed that the volume of my, of my stool is, is, is not. There's, there's not very much volume in spite of me eating a ton of veggies. So, you know, you have to really look at diet. You know, do, you, do they have enough of nuts and seeds and other types of prebiotic fiber? And optimize that, of course. But I, I don't like to see short-chain fatty acids low. That's bad colon health. So when we do see that, often I will encourage, like that, that fiber that I mentioned from the glucomannans, konyaku, uh, is a wonderful, wonderful root. And, of course, always foods, but sometimes you have to give butyrate also to help the short-chain fatty acids. What is the functional blood chemistry course you mentioned? Mastering Blood Chemistry by Dr. Harry Eidener. He's wonderful. So that's a, that's a functional medicine class I really like. What supplement, oh, okay, what supplement did you give the 90-year-old woman? Okay, this I gave Cataplex F. That one is from Standard Process, and I adore that supplement, Cataplex F. It is its own interesting formulation that I have not seen in any other company. I guess the one challenge is it's, uh, it's, it's not from a gluten-free facility, so that one, I believe, has a little bit of wheat germ. So if you do have huge gluten sensitivity, you have to keep that in mind. Uh, even though they say it's the fat and you don't have to worry, I, I always err on the side of caution. It is a wonderful supplement. Let's see here. Okay, looking at the CMP... How do you treat increased total protein and globulin compared to decreased protein and globulin? To be honest with you, I treat them the same. I give them betaine HCL in the middle of a meal. However, if they are uh, putrefying you know, their foods, if they're low, sometimes I have to say, okay, if I give it to them in the middle of their meal, and they have any kind of burning sensation, not warming, but burning on an extremely low dose, that's telling me that I have to uh, use a, a softer approach and I'm going to have to heal some GI inflammation first and do this in stages. Do you recommend home testing to screen for hypochlorohydria, baking soda test, HCL challenge test? I do like the HCL challenge test that I do with patients once I know that, they, that they're not, in, have, not having an inflamed gut. So if I give them two betaine HCL, little tablets, like the lowest dose you can find, and they say, ouch, that hurt my stomach, or oh, I'm nauseous, that tells me that I can't do the HCL test. I have to heal and seal up their, their gut first and have to take the fire out and, and do all of the, those things that I would do almost like when you're getting someone off PPIs, and then I will work them to that. But that might be four to six months down the road. Will beetroot supplement be useful for a person with leaky gut? I would say absolutely. I, I literally use this beetroot supplement for, I dare say, 90% of my people. Uh, okay, last question. Isn't any salt NACL? Yes, but I want unrefined because 
regular salt, of course, has anti-caking agents and aluminum and all of the things that we don't like. I want the unrefined salt because it also has trace minerals in it, so it's considered a food. So I believe that is our last question, and I thank you all very much for listening in today. Thank you, Diana, for your expertise. You were we are out of time. Oh, thank you. We are out of time for more questions. We sincerely hope you have enjoyed this webinar. Be sure to visit our website, www.spectracell.com forward slash webinars for next month's webinar announcement. Good night.